and good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 for Thursday, September the 15th, 2022. I am going to attempt to do something a little bit different in uh, what I want to present. And tonight, I'm, I'm just going to work on the Fibonacci. Again, I am feeling a little bit stronger at the moment that the count is likely going to bounce itself up a little bit on the probability scale. Uh, <clears throat> those of you that may are newer to watching my videos, I will never give 100% probability to something because the markets can do what the markets want to do. And too many times when you've come in with 100% certainty, this is going to happen, it whips and, and does the opposite. So in any case, I always leave open probability and some potential. So with that in mind, I am getting a little bit more comfortable with this being the completion point for primary wave A, this being the completion point for primary wave B, and that we now have begun a primary C wave decline. And within that decline, there'll be five waves of intermediate degree. Those are labeled in yellow. And, they, and those five waves of intermediate degree will be labeled one, two, three, four, five. So as you can see, we've done one and two, and we started to drop again as it should. So these are all within expectations of what we should start to see. Now, again, the fact that we're dropping now and we're close to dropping below the uh, low from the beginning of, the, of September. So it's, uh, September the 7th, we got down to 38, I believe 83. And then we ran up to 41.75. And kablooey, dropped down out of the sky off of that one. So we're closer to breaking that low. Today we got down to, let me put that correctly, 3905. <laughs> we're looking to drop below 3883. So a good little push, and it could happen overnight, and we're there. Now, being that this is the daily, this is the what we've done so far in the intermediate third wave. So what I want to now talk about and really show how we put it together is taking a look at this big picture. And now I want to put the Fibonacci extensions out there for the primary C wave. And to do that, we go on to the extension tool, which is on Thinkorswim, that's what it looks like. And then I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna take it down to there and I'm gonna bring it back up to there. So what we have now are the Fibonacci extensions for the primary C wave down. And right now we got down to uh, 0.382, which is a Fibonacci retracement level, and had has provided support again for intermediate wave one to complete and to put in intermediate wave two. And we have Fibonacci relationships up to that level as well. And so now we're putting in, because we have one and two, I can add, and I will do that in a moment, for intermediate wave three. And then we've got this against the intermediate C wave, and we'll start getting overlaps, and therefore we'll begin to get a picture on the depth and potential that the intermediate third wave will have. So first, let me just pull this open a little bit and just say that wave C, which is the one in progress, would be equal to wave A, which completed here, at nine at 36.39, it would be equal to it 100 percent at 3161. Now that is a Fibonacci relationship, and it would be an absolute minimum that I'd be looking for out of this C wave. Characteristically, C waves are destructive, they can go very fast, they can be very severe in, in the direction of the trend and right now that's down. So we've already seen uh, on Tuesday, pretty solid drop. And we started to pick up and drop again. That could be showing us that we have total weakness. Now I wanna look at the Fibonacci, I'm sorry. 
I go over to just analyzing the market. So 3161, absolute minimum. The zone that I continue to use, and again, I'm going to flip out to the weekly on an Elliott basis, since we are looking for the A wave of a cycle degree to be completing here, I've been looking for it to complete at the fourth wave, within the fourth wave, price territory, the fourth wave of one lesser degree, and that would be primary. So I'm looking for the primary sequence then, ABC, to complete somewhere in this zone. And Elliot himself is the one who said at the terminus of the fourth wave of one lesser degree. And that would put it down to 2170, I believe this is, 60, 67. And <clears throat> my the fibs here point more towards 28, 20, 28, 2900, down to 2700 with overthrow and serious overthrow can bring it down to 2440. And that would then complete the ABC on primary degree. So it would complete the primary C wave, the cycle A wave, wherever this ends up, which then turns and sets the market for a, a pretty strong B wave rally. Now, this was a B wave. This was a B wave. You can see they just come and they just go. They just do. So we would have one on a cycle level and it has a lot of potential a lot of potential and ultimately ending in a fashion like this but even bigger right so this is the a for primary degree and if we get down to here this would be the a on cycle degree so that's though that's the fibs right there now i want to go back down to the four hour chart and open it up a little bit because now I wanna put in the next set of Fibonacci extensions and it's going to be for the intermediate third wave. So we just looked at the entire C wave. Now let's start looking at the individual waves in between. I'm gonna go there to there, oops, to here. Okay. and. You can see we begin to have some overlap. We have three at 618, actually. Um, it's already, it's like 1.382 1 of intermediate wave one. Down here where I think it could end. And, and again, this is a zone. These are zones. Down into here. And ultimately, we had all the way down. And so intermediate three... I run out. So intermediate three looks like still that zone all still pairs up. And with the larger 618 particularly pairs up very nicely. We do have some, the 50 and the 100 are together. So 618, and again, this is the total C wave. And we're in what should be the largest portion of it. And so we're looking at intermediate three. Right now, we again, we do have 37.44 down to 37.32. And then we break and we have 36.26 down to 36.06 or 3600. 35.61 down to 3500. So you're going to see the pattern and the pockets. And so we now are finding where we should find support. 1.618 support for this intermediate third comes in at 34.56. Well, that's just below a sweet spot at 35.05. And just above, I don't use this very much, but it can be support or resistance at 34.10. So we have a great deal of support right there for intermediate wave three. We're now just getting closer to 3,900. So we have a decent amount left. That's 200, 300, 400. We have a decent amount left before I think this is done. And so what I can look for from here, 
putting those on. We have the larger picture right out here, and that swings right around there. But on the larger picture, we are looking for much more. We're looking for below that. We're looking for closer to here. So you can see we kind of run out for that, but that does not suggest by any means that we're not going to get down there because we're in an intermediate wave three. After intermediate wave three, we have an intermediate fourth wave counter trend rally. We have a bounce, and then we still have an intermediate wave five down. So there's plenty of room and plenty of time to get us down to those lows, which were March of 2020. And again, we've been asking the same question, or I get asked the same question, how? How can it get down there? What's going to cause it? Well, we're witnessing. We're witnessing what's it's going to cause it. And for many, it's a shock. For many, it's whatever. So those are the numbers. And again, we'll be looking at the structure. So we compare it with the Elliott. And again, wave three, normally the longest and the strongest, wherever it falls in whatever the sequence is, whether it's an up sequence or down sequence impulse, the third wave is normally the longest and the strongest. So we're just beginning that. So once I can get a decent wave two, and I don't think that was it. If it was, seriously, get out of the pool because it it got nowhere close to coming up to levels of even giving a shot at 4,000. And upon reflection, that I think it was me. I don't know, maybe not, because if they really rally it tomorrow, so I can never say never, right? But it appeared that the short is at 4,000. That's the strike. And I, I was kind of made clear, don't try. You're going to have to push really hard. And you're going to have to spend a lot more money than you really want. Maybe. I don't know. But that's, you know, when I'm watching it, I'm like, hmm, okay. I'm thinking that they would power it up and try to squeeze the short. Um, but obviously, the ones that are short are pretty big, and they're going to sell it there. That's what they want. Um, in any case, that's it for here. And once we get a one, two, because the other thing that I talked about here on, and this is all based the hourly, was that the market still could have just have been putting in minor wave one. And so we still might get that rally. Don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow by expiration, particularly tomorrow morning by the opening. That's when the AM expiration for the ES and the SPX happens and the, and the options. AM at the open. So whatever that opening price is, bang, that's what gets, gets there. So, hey, who knows what they'll do overnight? But I'm not expecting it. But if indeed this is going to be the finishing point of minor wave one, as I discussed last night, then yes, the potential to rally exists I don't think they'll get it back up to 4,000. That would be pretty strong in a very negative uh, undertone to the market. The inflation, that's really striking. Tomorrow, is a, it's not on the books, but I heard, um, actually while I was at the gym, that the Michigan uh, manufacturing report comes out tomorrow morning. And that can uh, speak volumes to inflation, basically, because I guess Detroit's included in that. So we'll see. But in any case, there, there remains a possibility after if this completed minor wave one, then boom. If it didn't, folks, and truly if it didn't, then we made two new little lows and still we're failing like miserably here. That's we couldn't get above. 3981 the top that was it now and not tried to challenge tried to challenge tried to challenge and failed and failed and failed so i'm i'm more inclined to go with that it's we're finishing up minor wave 1 we get a minor wave 2 uh rally and again not to by tomorrow but it might rally up tomorrow back to the 50 get it up to 3975 trust me there's enough short there that It'll cause some covering all the way. And inside the stocks, because the other one that I'm hearing where there are a lot of shorts is Apple. For whatever the reason is, 
they're coming in for this one on you know and looking to take shorts off so and it looks like they're gonna they may try for 150. now that would suggest also that the markets are just going to continue to slide we slid and then we bought it back up but then we slid and then after the bell right you get that extra hour god bless our exchanges that they give them give give those portfolio guys that extra hour to come and do their business um and the only other thing that we can do is respond via the future but you can't you know options aren't trading etc cetera, etc cetera. and in the case again i'm going to flip over to the nasdaq we're going to see what happens tomorrow is quadruple expiration a lot of things expiring tomorrow a lot of things come into play we saw the start of that today anticipate the following we have an AM expiration. Those are primarily in the indexes. The NASDAQ has an AM expiration. The S&P has an AM expiration. And so does the Dow and the Russell, I believe. I'm not sure on the Russell, to be honest with you. But I would imagine they do. So at the open, right? everything's open and they click that price. That's the expiration price. Now that in and of itself could be a buy signal up to that level, up to the wherever that finishes on the opening. And then bam, all bets are off. Sellers come in and whack. So could be interesting. Over in the NASDAQ. Same deal. We're very close to uh, 11,915. We got down to 27, 37. We got down to 30, 12,030. And once we break this level, it's going to give a lot more confirmation that this wave two or whatever this correction is, is done. We're not going to swing and go back before we swing and go lower. And we're right there. I mean, if it stopped right here and turned before anything else, and just started to go up, so be it. But that's what it would have to do. Because if it breaks here, it's just there are irregulars in a wave two position. No, I'm, I've not witnessed that. But here we are doing the same thing that I did on the other. I'm going to go out to the daily and I'm going to put on the fibs for primary wave C. So primary wave C, we've done intermediate one and two, just as we have in the S&P. They do mirror. <clears throat> we have 100% where wave C would be equal to wave A at 8,042. And then, but again, like I said, the C waves, I, I would expect more. Being the size that we are, and in the degree, and ultimately where I feel the market should end up, again, at those lows. And in the S and, and excuse me, in the Nasdaq, that is going to be sixty six twenty nine. But it's the zone is the entire thing, and I usually have gone to the lower fifty percent. So with that in mind, B, yeah, 8,041 could, and it would fit, and 100%, it's okay. Quite often, most often, wave C is larger, which then brings us down into here. Remember, this is 6,000. So I'm thinking 66, 6,700, 6,800, 7,000, anywhere in here, I think we could find the bottom for primary wave C, and then in turn, cycle wave A. Then we will have basically taken back two years of rally. So pretty, pretty wild, over two years of rally. Anyway, <clears throat> um, coming back down now to can do it on the one hour chart. 
And nope, I can't. Don't you love it? They just took it away and they don't let me back it up. So go to the four hour chart, open this up a little bit. And now I'm going to measure for intermediate wave three. So we're going to go to hoops. Can I go right there? And down to this low, which is what? Or nope. Yep. And then up to the top. Okay. So it always comes off a little bit wrong. Because this is 87. I do want to be accurate. So I'm just going to fix that. Yeah, I'm, uh, sometimes I'm very particular. Okay, so now intermediate wave three. Remember, third waves, most often the longest and the strongest. So right now we're kind of honing in on the 618. 100% where wave three would be 100% or equal to in length to wave one, which I'm not looking for, but it works. 11,167, 168, 12. but I would expect the market to take a little pause there and then maybe put in a little rally and then come back down to finish that intermediate third wave, which I think would come more into here. So 10,007, 10,400. Now, we've not been down here. The lowest we've gotten thus far is 11,068. So we're ready. The next decline, even on an Elliott basis, would be expected. Primary wave C would be expected to take out the low of primary wave A. So, yes, I am looking for the whole thing to get below 11,068. That's the low thus far. So 100% for wave three, it could. Then we still have a four and a five, and the five then brings us down. But hey, I'm looking again for a much lower level with that C wave here, 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 probably between here and here, 100% to, to 1.236 of that A wave. And that it would all fit pretty clean. And then that's going to be, and uh, let me go back out to the daily, uh, to the weekly. Then that's going to be the cycle wave A. And if cycle wave A is down here, now you're getting, a, get a, just try to get a, a little bit of a vision on what this correction is going to look like by the time it's done. We would then just be on this level completing an A wave. So again, then what do we got to do? One of these, a B wave. But how is it going to? How big is it going to be? Look at this. Is the in, uh, intermediate degree? This was the primary degree. Do you see, bigger, more intense. Now we're going to take it up, kick it up another degree, and start from down here somewhere, and do a B wave which may take us right back to the top of this B wave. We wait, we get our numbers, we'll plug them in. But that's what's out there to come. We got a lot more downside to do. So I, I, I don't necessarily want to get married to the downside, but it's sure going to be more tradable if we go with, instead of wondering how deep can it go, well, we we just plugged in the numbers, and the numbers are the numbers statistically are the levels that get reached when you're discussing the size and the amount of time. So again, in and one hand, I'm feeling that it's rolling out pretty quickly. At least the A wave, the cycle A wave is rolling out pretty quickly. If it gets done, if cycle A gets put in by October, November, possibly even December, I don't know, um, that sets the new year into a pretty strong uh, start because we're looking at a, a, a B wave. 
So again, just on numbers, you're looking for something that's going to appreciate. It's going to go up. Um, because again, like I've told you, I really do not try to adopt or take on a bullish or bearish posture or bias. Uh, can tend to get me in trouble and tends you to kind of get an attitude that anybody that doesn't agree with you is foolish. So just stay open. Let, let somebody else go to that battle. I'd rather just participate, 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 and just keep trading. So in the NASDAQ, back down here at the hourly chart, we're looking like we could continue to drop. Now, this is for intermediate wave three. And right now we're getting ready to break below the, the low of intermediate wave one, which is perfect. That is to be expected. As the expectation remains one level up, one degree up for the primary C wave to take out the low of primary A. Now we're down on an intermediate degree. Intermediate wave three should definitely take out the low of intermediate wave one. Absolutely, most definitely should. And come in greater in length than wave one. So here we are. These are the supports coming off. There probably is not much between where we were, uh, 11,930 down to below 11,900. There's, there's nothing really in there. So it, if it goes, it should go pretty quickly. The next February's uh, support is at 11,865 down to 60. And then you can see the zones, 11,704, 11,563, et cetera. Now I can take this out and let me show you. We do have support price-wise. I can go over, uh, but we're getting close to going through them. We have at 11,500 uh, down to 11,470, 470. And then we have 11,375. So, you know, we've, we've got price points. How strong the support's going to be, it's in the decline. So it's just price support. Just they're going to take a look. They're going to stop. They're going to take a look. Maybe there'll be an extended point of control. Maybe there'll be a value or you know, something else will kind of come in and line it up and you just pause right there for a little bit, catch your breath and then break 11,068. <clears throat> um, because it's, there are, as I want to say consequences when a market decides it's going to start breaking below and create new lows for a whole sequence. And it could be a trigger point. A lot of things can happen if it breaks 11,000. So, and the anticipation or the expectation on my part is that it will, and that it's on the way to do that now. So that's the NASDAQ. If the market turns and heads up, it can now, but it, it can't go down one, one, one bit more. And I'm not sure where it's going to open. It'll open in about seven minutes. So, that's the story for the NASDAQ. That's the story for the S&P for today. Again, tomorrow is expiration. And, and folks, quadruple, it's either going to be, uh, I don't want to say a statement like I used to say always on the floor, but I digress because it contained a word that isn't appropriate. Um, but it would be, not, it would be something that I would not be looking for. I would not be looking for. I felt the seller's presence today, and I don't suspect that they're going to walk away from it and not participate tomorrow. All right. So again, quadruple expiration. Just give yourself a break and do the SET score. That's you know, Take a look at your sensations, your emotions, and your thoughts. Figure out where you are at emotionally, where you are at in the mindset. For, because tomorrow could just turn out to nothing. And so you you want to be able to make your adjustments to that instead of like expecting a big down day, because that may not happen. We may first go up 
as they make an attempt because again, there is the AM expiration. It exists for the NASDAQ as well. And to get those indices up, you got to go buy those stocks. And so we may see that. All right. Have a great trading day tomorrow. And the next update will be, could be a podcast, could be just an Elliott Wave update, but it'll be on the 19th.